Cheers everyone, this is Blaster Brewmaster here, and welcome to a tutorial on how to set up OBS Studio. Now, of course, if you do not know what OBS is, OBS happens to be a video recording platform that you use for recording your video games and actions on the desktop. So I'm going to fire up OBS Studio now. Now, of course, you're going to want to go and get the program if you haven't already, and make sure you go ahead and download and install the product already. So you're going to find that um, in the description down below. So once you are ready with that, we will go ahead and get on with the tutorial. So the first thing that you need to do once you set up OBS is you need to start up with some profiles. So you'll find the profiles up here in your menu at the top. If you go here to profile, you'll have new, duplicate, rename, and remove. Now you'll see a few that I've already set up here. And what the profiles do is they allow you to preset some of your settings. You can set it up to stream with different services, to record at different resolutions, all of that sort of stuff. So we're going to go ahead and click on new, and we're going to call this test profile one, just to get things out of the way and make it nice and simple. Okay, so now that we have set up a new profile, you can double check, you can see that that's checked off right now. We're working within this profile, so we need to go into our settings and set up what exactly we're going to do with this profile. So, first here, we've got the general section. There's not going to be too much that you need to really worry about here. The source alignment snapping, that is going to deal with where exactly we're going to be snapping the actual scenes that we're going to be working with here. And so I'm going to go to video right over here on the left-hand side. That's going to be one of the first places I would suggest that you start recording. Now, your base canvas resolution and your output scaled resolution, that's going to basically be how we're going to record all this. So, base canvas resolution, that is the resolution of your monitor that you're currently working with. And so, I've got a couple of different choices here because I've got two different monitors. So, I'm sticking with the 1920 by 1080 Now, my output scaled resolution is going to be based on that ratio. So, I can scale it down to anything that I need to. Now, if you need your system to be scaled down, if you end up finding that you're running too low on resources or anything when you're doing this, go ahead and set it to a lower resolution. So, we're going to just get ahead and set it for this. Now, if you end up finding that you, know, you have a powerful enough system to go ahead and do this, go ahead and pop it up at 1920 by 1080 leave it there. But this will help as far as reducing a lot of the overload on the system because of the fact that it's, you know, reducing the output right away. Okay, now we have a couple of other options here. We can go ahead and change the actual downscaling filtering. Now, of course, Exos will be the best option if you've got it right here. Go ahead and set it to that. And then your FPS value. If you want this to run at 60 frames per second, this is going to be where you change it. Go ahead and change it over to 60. Now then, so the next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and set up some of your streaming services. You go over here to stream on the left hand side, and then you decide which service you want to stream to. Now there's a whole bunch of different choices here, of course we've got YouTube, YouTube Gaming, Twitch, Hitbox, Dailymotion, Facebook Live, but there are going to be definitely several different ones that you may want to use. So you may want to set up different profiles for each one. Now you may want to stream to individual services such as Twitch or YouTube Gaming, or if you want to stream to multiple services at once, you may want to use a service like Restream.io or Joycaster. That will allow you to set up multiple streaming services that you stream just to one server and it goes and takes care of the rest. It streams to Twitch, to YouTube, to Hitbox all at once. So you've got multiple sources where you're streaming to and you've also got a chat where you can see collectively all the different people that are in there and communicating with you. So I'm going to leave it here as Twitch and from here I'm going to just decide which server I want to send to. So I've got San Francisco, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as that. Now, I just go ahead and put my stream key in here, which you'll get from the website. Now, I just go ahead and put in my stream key right here. And that will allow it to go ahead and stream directly to the service as yourself. Now, if you want to use a custom service, because not all the services, such as Joycaster that I just mentioned, is listed here, you can go up to stream type and set custom streaming server, put in your URL and your stream key right here. So we're now going to go over here to Output. 
One of the first things I like to do when I'm in output is switch it from simple mode to advanced. It gives me a lot more options and control over exactly what I'm going to be doing here in the output mode. Now the first tab I've got is streaming. Now, there's going to be a couple of different encoder options and it's going to depend on what exactly you have in your system. Now X264 is the default and that's going to rely a bit more heavily on your processor. But for me, I personally like to run with the AMD Video Coding Engine, which is part of my graphics card. That offloads some of the performance onto the graphics card with a very minor hit compared to what I see sometimes with X264. I've seen that that especially was very helpful when running games like Grand Theft Auto V, where if I left it on the X264 encoder, it would end up causing a lot of texture and graphics issues. So I'm going to switch this over here. Now, one of the first things you'll notice here is the audio track. Now the audio track is going to be which audio track specifically gets streamed up to YouTube or to Twitch. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now, I'm going to go ahead and leave this as enforced in streaming service encoder settings. And then rescale output here. Now, back over here on the video section, we have our base canvas and then our output scaled resolution. We don't really need to do anything here because we already set it as 1280 by 720. So profile, I'm going to leave here as main. Now keyframe intervals, I'm also going to leave as main. Pretty much most of this stuff I'm going to leave exactly as it is. The bitrate and the rate control, those are going to be two things that you may need to play around with. Now depending on what resolution you're going with, you may need to increase your bitrate. Now one of the things that they usually suggest is that your bitrate is not going to be any higher than your upload speed. So you may need to go in and open up the web browser. Go here to new window. Let me bring this over here. Go to speedtest.net and let me run that. And then get yourself a baseline as far as what exactly your upload speed is. The download speed is not as important here because what we're doing is we're uploading to those services. So you'll see my download speed go up here, and we'll come back to that in a second and see what exactly our upload speed is. So now your bitrate should be really no higher than 80% of your maximum upload speed. So if I go over here, so 12.26 megabits is my upload speed. So I'm going to have to go and open up the calculator, take 12.26, we need to convert that to kilobits, which one megabit equals 1000 kilobits. So we're going to go ahead, multiply this by 1000, and then we're going to multiply it again by 0.8. So that is the absolute maximum. Now, Twitch recommends that you really don't set it any higher than 3300, so this is going to be way more than enough. So we're going to just go back here and set our maximum to 3300. Now, for streaming, you generally want to keep a constant bitrate. We're going to set this to advanced, because there's a couple other settings you may really want to reduce, mostly right here, minimum and maximum QP. So, the minimum QP is going to be the best quality, maximum QP is going to be the lowest quality that it can dip to. So, that will change the amount of work your system is going to have to do. But it's also going to change the quality of the video should there be any sort of processing hiccups, things like that. So I reduced this down to about 20 for streaming. Now we're going to go over here to the recording section. And we're going to have a couple of things that we need to change up in here too. Okay, so once we're here in the recording section, we've got several different things that we need to change. Now, recording path, that's going to be, of course, where we save our videos. Now, you can use the defaults if you want to, but I've got a place that I personally set this up here on my F drive. I'm just going to go in here and set it so that I've got everything neat and orderly when I'm working with it. Now, generate names without file, without spaces, that's fine if you want to do that or not. Recording format. Now, there's several different options that you can do. Now, I set all of these to have multiple audio tracks, which is this right here. There's up to four tracks that I can record different scenes onto. So, I need to change it from FLV. Now, you could do MP4, but I found that MOV is a bit more reliable and a bit easier to work with as well. Again, the encoder, I switch this over to AMD Video Encoding. Leave the resolution output as it is. You, generally, that's going to tax your system a lot more, so I tend to do it here on the video layer rather than within the output section. So we're going to go down here. 
profile is fine. Now, rate control, you may want to switch this over to constant quality, especially if you're using AMD Video Encoding Engine, that might end up producing a better quality overall. These I generally leave alone, so I'm going to go down here to advanced, and the same thing about the minimum and maximum QP. So for this, I'm going to change it to 10 so that there's a much smaller gap as far as the quality dipping. Now we go over here to audio, and you may want to go ahead and give these tracks some different names. So for this, I'm going to call this combined, because right now on my streaming, I've got this one as the combined track. Now you can do this in any order, whichever way you want to call these and whatever you want to stream to this. The main thing here is whatever you pick here in the streaming tab, this is going to be the track that actually gets uploaded when you are streaming. So for right now, I'm just going to leave number one as combined, and then I'm going to fake the next one here, desktop audio. And the third one is going to be microphone. The last one is just left kind of empty. I can use this for anything later on down the road. I'll show you in a later video how we can set up multiple audio channels so that we can record something separate to this fourth channel if you want to. Audio bitrate, you could change this up if you want to all the way up to 320, but probably 160, 192 is going to be more than adequate for most everything that we're going to be doing. Okay, and so that's pretty much it for everything that we need to do here for setting up our profile. So I'm going to click on OK here. And now the profile set, we've got everything set to stream to it. So we need to start working with our scenes and sources. So scenes are going to be basically what we're going to be switching to and where we're going to start uploading the video content and what we decide we want to push at any time. So over here, we'll see our scene transition. The nice thing about Studio is it allows you to see changes that you want to make before you actually push them. You can use Studio Mode over here to see exactly what you're going to be doing here, and then you can just transition it to the right side. That's where you're actually seeing the changes that are being made. And so let's go ahead and look at some of these scenes I've got here. So I've got different recordings for high, mid, and low where I have my webcam in the scene. You're not going to be seeing it at the moment just because of the fact that I'm recording this at the same time. I've also got it set up for capturing face rig, and with that, I've also got it set out to chroma key out green background so that you only see the character itself too. I've also got a end video where I can play this at the end of a stream so that I can close out the live stream and have some content and information for people to read. So I'm going to create a new scene over here by clicking on the plus button right here. I'll give this a name, test scene, and click OK. Now we can start adding sources by clicking on the plus button right here. And we can pick different things. We've got image, we've got browser source, media source, text, display capture where we can take an entire monitor and capture it, window capture, we can capture specific windows, game capture, we can tell it exactly what game we need to capture, video capture device, that's where you can put in things like your web camera or if you use an Elgato, things like that, and audio input and audio output captures. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a game capture here in a moment, but first let me go ahead and launch up a game. Now you'll end up finding that you'll need to change this game capture up every time you launch a different game. You could do a display capture if you want to, just to capture whatever is on the screen entirely, but sometimes I find that doesn't always work, so game capture may work better and sometimes Windows capture may work better, it just all depends on what the game is. So I'm going to go ahead and launch up Undertale right here. That way it's going to be available as an option to load in once I pick up my game capture. So I'm going to go here and click on plus, find the game capture right here, and I'm going to call this one number two. Uh, not five, two. There we go. So click OK here, I'm going to turn off capture all full screen applications and tell it Undertale. Now you can see it already in the background there and you can see it right over here too. Now you also see my mouse moving over this area, which is not something that we generally want unless it's a game that involves pointing and clicking. So you're going to want to check off Capture Cursor right here. Otherwise, there's not too much more that you necessarily want to turn on. You may need multi-adapter compatibility, that depends on the game. And anti-cheat compatibility hook, that might also be necessary too, just leave that one on for now. Okay. So click OK. Now we've got this in here, we just readjust this to show about where we need it to be. And we can just move it over here. 
And there we go. If we want like a background for this right here, you can just go ahead and click on the plus button here and go to image. And we'll go ahead and give this a background image. That's the name for my new one. Of course, if you've got sources already set, you can just go to here to add existing and pick one that you want to insert here. But I'm going to go ahead and click on new and create a new one and click OK. And then just go browse for an image file. I'll just pick this earthbound one here. That'll work. Okay, so now this is on top of the game capture. We don't want that to happen. So let's go ahead and click on the down arrow here to move it over. Okay, so now we've got this position with a nice little background. You'll also see over here we have the mixers section. So desktop audio is of course reading off right now. And you'll see that I've got my mic muted so that I can record this separately. But if I wanted to record this, you can just unmute that. And we have little settings wheels next to these too. So click on this. This will allow you to run any filters, modify the properties and say which device you want this to record to. Use device timestamps if you want to or not. Let's just double check to see if there's anything there. Nope. Here you can go to filters, you can set up noise gate, here's the different options that you have in a noise gate right here. This will basically ignore any audio that goes underneath this threshold and then opens once you get above 27 decibels. You can adjust this however you need to. Set up your attack time, your hold time, your release time. And that will kind of adjust the audio settings as far as the microphone once you open that up. And one other thing here under Mixer is you'll want to go here because we set up the multiple audio channels. You want to go here onto the wheel and set up what these different sources record to. Now you can see here we have the desktop audio and the mic audio. Those are the main ones we want. So I said before that track one was combined. So I've got both of these recording to track one. This way, when I select it for my stream, both of these can be heard at the same time. Desktop audio was set to number two, and microphone audio was set to number three. So channel two only has the desktop audio, and channel three only has the microphone audio. Once you record this, you can use Audacity with FFmpeg installed in it to take the different audio channels and save them to WAV or MP3 files. That way you can then take those audio files and adjust them manually, go and take them back into Audacity, clean them up if you need to, run them through Adobe Audition, whatever happens. Okay, and then final things here that might be important to know for when you're working with this is you'll want to set up all your different scenes to have everything that you want to be able to switch to, as we said over here. Set up all your sources to layer up the way that you want to. You know, show them exactly how they want right here. And so now we can start recording and streaming. So now we're ready to go ahead and go live with this. We can start streaming and recording. And there'll be a few things you have to keep in mind as well. So I'm just gonna start the recording here so that we start capturing everything that's going on here. You'll wanna keep in mind these little areas right here. Here's your timer for when you start recording. And this is your current CPU load. Now, this isn't too bad at the moment, but once I start streaming, that might change a bit. You'll see that that's going up a bit here, and we have a couple of other things that are going on too. So over here, this is a drop frames. This is letting you know anytime that we're losing frames in our recording and in our streaming while we are working with this. Over here is the kilobits per second. That is how much is currently being uploaded to your streaming service. Now the higher the number, the better. That's generally a good rule of thumb with this. You definitely don't really want it to dip too low below 2000, because otherwise you might start having some buffering issues on the streaming side of things. Now one thing you may notice over here on the left hand side, it says encoding overload. Consider turning down video settings or using a faster encoding preset. You'll want to watch out for that and make sure that you don't see that coming up too much. Otherwise, the actual recording and the streaming will end up suffering quite a bit and stutter a lot. So if you end up seeing that, you may need to change your settings. You may need to change it in either the game itself or going within your settings here and play around with the different settings you've got. Now, if you end up finding that you need to switch any services around or make any sort of changes, you have to take it down on the streaming and the recording. Make sure both of those are off. That way you can change your profile settings up. You can change all your scenes and your sources as you need to here while you're recording. 
but those specifically you're going to need to go into the other program. So that's it for the tutorial today. I do hope that you found this useful and helpful for you. Now I do plan on turning this into a series. I'm going to cover issues that you may run into OBS and how to troubleshoot those, how to work with different streaming services, how to basically get the most out of OBS, and how you can use different tools and services to help improve the quality of your videos. So please, if you do want to see more of those, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Make sure that you check those out later on. All right. So, thank you for going ahead and joining me here today. In the meantime, just go ahead and raise your glass in the air and have another pint on me. Love and peace. By the way, I would be happy if you left sometime soon. <laughs> I'm tired of your family living. Damn! Your family living next door. We've loaned your father a lot of money. It may have been $100,000 or more. Well, I guess it really could have been less. But because of loan, my family and I now live in poverty. Wow. Wow. Uh, this game is so